All right, back here with Dr. Thomas Cunningham, MD. How are you doing today, I'm Thomas? I'm doing well, man. Awesome, Thanks, good. Man. What can deadlift do for us as climbers? How is it going to make me a better climber? Yeah, so if we're gonna talk about the physical aspects, the deadlift is gonna target pretty much the entire posterior chain. Mm -hmm. And that's everything all the way from the feet all the way up through the shoulders. And so that's something that's gonna help you keep your feet on the wall. It's gonna help you hold that core and body tension on the overhung routes. Mm -hmm. And it's also gonna develop kind of the overall body power. And what is what muscles are those? Yeah, so that's everything starting from the heel. So you go up, you got the gastroc and the soleus and the calf, you got the hamstrings, the glutes, latissimus dorsi, the posterior rector muscles, all the way up through your paraspinal muscles in your neck. And the deadlift is working all of those all in one those. move. Exactly. And let's talk for a second about the programming. And yeah. so we've got on season and off season, mm -hmm. uh, I think generally speaking. Um, right now it's summertime here at Rock Sport Climbing Gym in Louisville, Kentucky. So it's feeling warm. It's off season. It is off season, um, definitely. So let's talk about uh, frequency set rep schemes for deadlift on the off season. Yeah, so I think that if you're someone that is not yet seasoned with some of this lifting, I think two days a week is really all you're going to need to see gains. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to stay within the three to five rep range. That's going to allow your body to develop the strength, but not really get into the hypertrophy. So we as climbers, we don't want to put on that muscle mass in the legs or the glutes or the upper body. And so we want that strength aspect. So if you stay in the three to five rep per set range, and really only, I would say three to five sets total per workout. Got it. Um, so if we're doing on the low end, say three reps, three sets, that's only nine lifts. Nine lifts and total. Total. Twice a week, you're talking 18, maybe 20 times. And I think that's a good place to start just to kind of get your feet wet, um, to get those muscles really used to the loading. And so when you're doing such low reps, is the idea to have them be pretty max in effort? Like what's the, the kind of the rate of perceived exertion or um, are you building from one set to the next? Uh, how are you thinking about the, the weight that you're gonna be adding to the bar? Sure, sure, so they are heavy, right? So um, a lot of times what we will use as a percentage of your one rep max. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're doing say two reps in that workout, you wanna be somewhere in your 90 to 95% of your one rep max. If you're more in the three, four or five uh, reps in the workout, probably somewhere in the 75 to 85% of your one rep max. Got it. And keeping um, that consistent set after set. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, start on the lower end. So if we, if I'm doing, you know, three or four sets, I may start out at maybe 70 or 75 and then 80, 85, maybe two reps at 90. Um, and that's after a pretty generous warm up. And I do a pretty good body warm up, get the cardiovascular system going, maybe 20 or 30 minutes in the warm up before I jump into those lifts. And are you warming up by doing deadlifts as well, um, but, but lighter weight deadlifts, or, or is the warm up tangential to the deadlift? Sure, I, I will definitely do some some kind of pulls with the bar. I will definitely do some lighter, you know, one or two sets of one or two reps just to kind of get the body and the neurologic system firing. I think it would be ill-advised to just jump into, you know, an 80 or 85% one rep max for a couple sets. You right. may, may definitely screw yourself yeah. up. Yeah. So then in season, we're, you know, we're, we're straight in the summer right now, but let's say September, October is rolling around, we get into November, the conditions are really good. Um, you're looking at just maybe one day a week? I just do one day a week. And my lifting history is, I think, long enough where with that one day a week, I can maintain that upper end strength. And so I will do usually only three or five sets of three to five reps just one day a week. And I can, that last set, I'm still hitting those same benchmarks on most of those lifts. It may taper a little bit in the season, but I'm okay with that. Got it. And um, let's talk about form for a second here. We're gonna have you um, show us something with the bar, but what do we need to be focusing on, particularly those who maybe the last time they did a deadlift was when they were in like high school sports, yeah. or maybe they've never done a deadlift. Um, what, what are the, what's best practices and what are the, the areas where, or um, the things we could do that might uh, risk injury? Sure, so I think that the, the deadlift is a good one to start with actually. I think it's probably one of the easiest lifts to learn mm. just because there's, there's not very many things that you have to teach, right? So I think the biggest thing is starting with the barbell over the middle of the foot. So the middle of the foot is where we're gonna generate that power and that strength. We're gonna press from the middle of the foot, not the toe, not the heel, right through the middle of the foot. 
So we want that barbell about an inch off of the ankle. That's where the middle of the foot is in most folks. And then you're gonna wanna make sure you keep those hips in a neutral, kind of more to a high position. And we're gonna wanna pull the bar up the shin, up the leg, the whole way. So some pitfalls that I see are people really rocking back on those heels and getting off balance one way or mm -hmm. going towards the toes, getting the bar to push forward. And then we're trying to move that bar back into that neutral position. So when we set up over the bar, if you can set up the bar over the middle of the foot, everything else will really kind of fall into place and we'll show that. And the arms are locked straight? Arms are locked straight, yep. Um, and you're gonna start with those arms a little bit outside the shoulders. Your feet are gonna be slightly toed out a little bit, kind of in a squat position, maybe a slightly narrower. That allows for your knees to kind of come out over your toes. That allows room for your torso and your belly to kind of get into the deadlift position. And then what about the velocity of the lift? Sure, so I, it depends. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I think that when you're really putting on a lot of weight and you're maybe in a strength phase or you're doing a lot of volume, you're really gonna wanna concentrate on form and you're not gonna wanna pull very fast. As I move closer to the season, I subconsciously will try to think about more speed and velocity. So I'm taking a little bit of weight off. I may be doing less weight, but I'm really trying to do that more of an explosive movement. So then you get to the top of the lift, which mm -hmm. is you're standing up straight, your hips come forward, hips you're, come forward, you're the vertical. Chest and the, the chest is raised at the very end of the lift. Um, and then the biggest one that I see is people just drop the bar, uh -huh. right? So I think that's a big faux pas. We don't want to drop the bar. We do want to come down as fast as we can, but in a controlled motion. So that's what the bumper plates are for. It's not just to, you know, throw the CrossFit bar, you know, off of, off of you. You want to make sure that it's a controlled lift and you're going to descend by releasing the hips first and then releasing the torso all the way down with the bar. Okay. But you're not just, um, you're not trying to slowly lower. Um, no, it's not mm -hmm. a, a eccentric. Um, no, the, the, yeah, the eccentric movement is really what's going to produce that delayed onset muscle soreness. Uh -huh. So if we can really keep most of the lift as a concentric motion up to the top, and then on the way down, there is some control, but it's as fast and controlled as you can all the way to the bottom. You're going to basically mitigate more of that soreness afterwards. And then you mentioned one rep max in order to help us kind of determine mm -hmm. how much we're going to do. That's 75 to 85 percent if we're doing, you know, three to five reps. Uh, how often are you testing your one rep max? And is that truly just you're just seeing as much as you could possibly do with one deadlift? Sure. So, you know, in my age, I don't do that. I use a two rep max mm -hmm. and I usually will use that hypothetically saying that's 90 to 95 percent of my one rep max. Got it. So there, there are plenty of tables out there in, in powerlifting manuals or online that you can take a look at to say, okay, if this is my two rep max, what should my percentage of one rep or two or three or four or five for a specific lift be? And those are pretty well studied. Um, you know, lifting, powerlifting, those kind of things have been all around long enough to have some good literature behind it. Hell yeah. Love it. All right. Well, we're going to lift some weights in a second here. Is there anything that we didn't touch on on deadlift that you feel needs to be said? Sure. I would say because it invokes so much muscle tissue all the way through the entire body, it's probably the best lift that you can do to stimulate hormone production, growth hormone, testosterone. So I think that, you know, if we're really trying to look to optimize our whole body, especially in recovery, especially in a strength season, especially in the off season, doing these lifts, especially the deadlift is going to get you a boost in those good hormones to help with recovery and strength. Love that. Fantastic. Last question. And that's where uh, something like this fits into your other climbing training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it depends on where you're prioritizing the gains. So right now in the off season, I'm really prioritizing strength. I'm really prioritizing my sleep and my hormone and getting healthy. And so I will put this at kind of the beginning after a good warm up, and I integrate it with my hangboarding. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in doing, between sets. In between sets, yeah. So I may do my warm up which is 20 or 30 minutes. I get a couple of lifts in to get my body warm and then I'll do a deadlift and then I'll go straight over and I may do a max hang mm -hmm. and then I'll rest or do some stretching and then go back and do a deadlift set and then do my hang board and then move on to the next workout. May do a, a you know, a shoulder press and then move over and do another hang board. Got it. So you may do, um, a few of the foundational exercises in the same workout session. I do them all. You do them all? I do them all. All five? All five. In, in one session, mm -hmm. working hangboard in and some mm -hmm. other things in, in, in between. Yep, and then I put my climbing in kind of at the end of that. So, um, and that may be a limit boulder session, it may be endurance like we're gonna do today, it may be a campus board session. Um, and so over the course of the, the whole workout, I may do 20 or 30 minutes warm up, 20 or 30 minutes of lifting or hangboard, and then maybe, you know, an hour of climbing.
Well, let's get started. Let's do it. All right, man.